Friends and fam, we are back. Another episode to Only Pod Can Judge Me. I'm your host, the big fella, D. King. We got my guy, R to the... R to the K, a.k.a. Illogic, a.k.a. Illogic 100. Holla at me. Show. And my boy, Wayne. And we got my boy, Wayne D. Wayne D. the Barber. Wayne D. 253. Come check me out. Hey, man, we are excited for another episode, fellas. Little different layout today. We got R to the K is on the road. But the show don't stop. So we're going to have some fun. Talk to us about where you at, RK. What you got going on, man? Man, I'm out. I'm back home in my hometown, Sacramento, California. You know, representing, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Out here doing the dang thing. Representing my nieces graduating from high school. So, you know, we got to support the youngsters. You know what I mean? So I came out here for that. Respect. Respect. I will say something, man. This is crazy. And we didn't plan this, y'all, but just to let you know, RK is representing the Kings. Um, um, Wayne D got the Pacers, and I got our hometown, the Sonics, on right now. I <laughs> promise you this, this wasn't planned, but it's just something that I guess great minds think alike, man. That, that's crazy. That's man. crazy. That's crazy you make mention of that because we are representing everything. Listen, <laughs> from everywhere, hometown, baby. No, for sure, man. <laughs> hey, and it's crazy. Hey, hey. My bad. Speaking of that, Dave, you from you from uh, you from Washington? You homegrown? Come on, man. Come on, man. Two hundred six, man. We all repping. We all repping home, then. It's all homegrown <laughs> for sure. But guess, guess where we all ended up, though? Right here with me. <laughs> right here with me. Hey, okay. man. Before we before we get into, we get into the topics here today, talk to me a little bit about um. How was your week, man? You, you travel had to travel down there, man. What what, what happened? Talk to me. Man, it's been a um, it's been a good road trip, man. We got on the road, you know what I'm saying, and um, drove down, you know what I'm saying. It's a good uh, it's a good twelve hour drive. We got here right on time, man. Left at seven, got here at seven, you know what I'm saying. And uh, seven and seven. Yeah, man, it's a good twelve hours, you know what I'm saying. Had all four of us, me, my daughter, my son, my wife, all in the car. We rolled down, you know what I'm saying. It was a good trip, man. Time, good, spent some good quality time, talk. They slept a lot. I drove a lot. You know what I'm saying? But a uh, good time together. You feel me? And, and I took care of the fish. So, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. You got to take those long drives, man. Look, and I, I don't try to put two hours, two to four hours on the foot. Look, I can't be behind the wheel that long. Look, you push the whole 12? Jeez, you're a monster. Man, I got a cold part about it. You know, my niece and my daughter just drove down to Fresno. You know what I'm saying? That's a three-hour ride. They just did that just to go support. Yeah. And then uh, I got to drive to L.A. coming up uh, in a couple of days, man, maybe in about a week. You know what I'm saying? Man, so you on the road, man. That's a great – it is graduation season, man. It's like shout-out to all the high Hello. school graduates, middle school graduates, elementary graduates, preschool graduates, God. and most importantly, those college graduates. M- m- much respect and love. Wayne D., man, how your week been going, man? Hey, man, my week been good. Hey, before we get any further, hey, man, y'all hit the like button. Y'all smash the like button. Subscribe, share, man, give us thumbs up. Give us feedback, man. We appreciate y'all. Like we were saying, only parking judges. Man, your boy is just out here, man. Your boy has just been, been just, just, just being chilling, big chilling. It's, we've been having some sunny days out here. Hey, RK, make sure you bring some of that good weather back when you come back too, man. Because up here, it's been beautiful. <laughs> Look, we've been spoiling a little bit. Summer times up here in Washington are, are a little beautiful. So, so I've just been, you know, just been enjoying, enjoying this good sun. You know, been in the office cooking up cuts, you know, and that's all I do. Cook up cuts, and that's about it. No, nah, that's How- what's up, man. I'm How glad everybody yourself? everybody's week was good, man. Just you know, the the normal grind, man. Making sure that the wife and kids is good, and you know, no complaints, man. Got tournaments this weekend, so we'll be in the gym near you um, to be able to help these young men grow as as hoopers. You know what I'm saying, and just be there to support the my children most importantly, and then everybody else that's on their team and whatnot. But let's open it up, man, with the topic, man. Um, we have a, a hero. A hero that passed away, man. Um, rest in peace, Jim Brown, man. Just give me you guys' perspective of what um, what he meant to you guys, or if you know the history of him. Just give me your feedback on uh, on Mr. Brown. Man, I I can open it up with with uh, his football career. Man, that guy was a beast on the football field. Man, Cleveland Browns. He was out there trucking everything. You know what I mean? So yeah, he was real. no joke as a football player. And a couple of that with his work that he did as a, as a civil rights activist, 
man, yeah. his his legacy is, you know, bar none. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, he can't, nobody can overshadow what he has done and what he's contributed, man. So he gets much respect, much love, you know what I mean? Um, you know, one of our elders, man, I got to give him all the love in the world, man. I hope he rests exactly. in peace. Respect. Um, what about you, Wayne D? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm going to just echo what he's saying, man. Like I was saying, Hey, like he was saying, monster on the field from what I from the videos that I've seen. I didn't I was too young to see him on the field, but from from videos I done seen it and movies that they done made of him, uh, uh the man was awesome on the field. A lot of the today's running backs like were like they seen Barry Sanders and Emmitt Smith, but before them, there was people who pioneered and made the way for them uh uh, uh to be who they are. Like we see now running backs we see like with uh with with um, Jonathan Stewart from the from the from the Colts, you know I got to shout out, you know not Indiana, Indiana, but the, but the, but uh like there's plenty of running backs who, who who have shown respect to him. What I like most about him so much is he wasn't just not only uh, respected in just football players, he was respected from 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 everyone, whether it was actors, whether it was uh, basketball players, whether it was Olympians, whether it was doctors, whether it was presidents, he was just revered and and praised. Uh, just because of his active uh, activist work um, that he done uh, for the community, uh, uh, for us black, for just for voting, the uh, the thing that stands stands out to me so much about him was when they took the picture with like I think it was like fifteen uh, black athletes uh, that was that was around the table. I, I forget what they were doing. I don't know if they were signing. Uh, um, that was they were supporting Muhammad Ali. Because he didn't yep. want to go fight in the war. Yep, that's exactly what they were supporting Muhammad Ali because he didn't want to go to uh, to war, and so they was standing with their brother, and that's what I mean just by like just 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 the community that he had behind him. Like that was a powerful moment to have seen in what was it? I can't remember the year, but uh, but but back in that times we seen. 15 black brothers from all different di- uh, dynam- dynamics, whether it was baseball, whether it was football, whether it was basketball, whether it was whatever, they all was coming from all over just to support one brother. So that's what I can remember the most about him is just how many people loved him and appreciated him, not just for what he did on the field, uh, but for what he did for others. Man, he yeah, was a giant. Like, yeah, that's much love and respect. I mean, when you think about um, the city of Cleveland in Ohio, he was Cleveland. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they have the, if I'm not mistaken, they got a trophy, you know, I mean, excuse me, they got a statue of him. Right. Um, and if they don't, they, they, they need to make one because he, he paved the paved the way. It was really inspirational because from LeBron James, when they won a championship, Jim Brown was right there. And let's just shed a little light of, um, some, some, some funniness on it. He was in, I'm going to get you sucker too, which was a good oh, movie, yeah. was a, yeah. which is a good movie. And he didn't play no games. He was the same way every time, but he had mad respect for everybody. And he did his thing on and off the field. So he didn't just use it as being a great athlete. He was a great human being. So right. much love and respect to Mr. Jim Brown. May you rest in peace, sir. And yeah. that's, that's man, that's big, but the, that's a, a, a good point. I didn't even think about that. His acting history, you know, he, he was in a lot of black exploitation films. Was, right. He was one of the first right. action stars. And right. he was one of the first stars to make that crossover too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. His resume is long. Like I said, he's a giant of a man. Yeah, you know, for sure. And he wasn't even that big in stature either. But see, that just goes to show you it ain't the, it ain't the, it ain't how big you are. It's about the it's about the heart, man. Heart over height in a lot of cases. You know what I'm saying? But for him to be able to do what he did on the football field when the pads were limited back then and the right. face mask had one bar, right? You know what I'm saying? And the very <laughs> limited pads, uh, one bar, and he any he, he like 30, 30 carries a game. And used to ground in town. And yeah, man, yeah. just ama- amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm-hmm. Any you guys got any, uh, any other feedback on uh, anything, any story that you that, that you can remember about him that that we can share with the people? Man, I mean, I, I just movies for me, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, Go ahead, RK. I was just gonna say, I I don't mean to keep stepping on you, man, but that 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 I'm gonna get you sucker cameo, man, was re- was oh, ridiculous. That man. was that was, that was one, of the, one of the best <laughs> things ever, man. It was a, and he just has a no nonsense where he has a, a look at his face where there's no way that I could be acting with him and not laugh because <laughs> he was just no nonsense. Was he in Jackie Brown too? 
He wasn't. That's, that's the movie that I'm talking. That's the movie that I'm thinking of too. He I was in he Jackie was, Brown. I, I thought, thought he was. I, I thought he was in Jackie Brown. We so, we you actually got to look up his, 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 We got to look up his portfolio or his catalog, man. He got he, he did some Jackie stuff. Brown. Yes, he was. You're right. I think it wasn't Jackie Brown. Yeah, that's man. The, rest, rest, right. Rest in peace, Mr. Brown. And then we just had another death recently that we did on the great, the great, the great. Tina Turner, man. man, inspirational, overcame obviously a lot with Ike and just mm-hmm. created her, her, her own deal. And she's, she was an iconic star for years, man. And, you know, now she gets to take her wings, man. Give you guys, give me you guys' perspective on Tina Turner. Wayne D. Man, I'm not, I ain't gonna lie to you. Look, look, I know, I know songs about Tina, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't too big of a big fan. Uh, uh, of Tina, but like you said, iconic. Uh, uh, I'm putting her up there with, with with like the Michael Jacksons. Like 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 the woman was phenomenal to me, and uh, I, I saw as uh, R.I.P. to the to a legend. But yeah, that's what I got. I, what about I, you, I, R to the K? Oh man, you know, um, uh, my it's crazy for me because uh, you know, um. Uh, my thing is, Angela Bassett was almost Tina Turner for me for a long time. Because seeing her play her and what's love got to do with it, yeah. I almost I, I couldn't get past Angela Bassett for a long time. But that just but she embodied who Tina Turner was. And and once I became more familiar with the real Tina Turner and what she was doing and who she was, oh man, that man, she 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 was, I mean, a, her, 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 the credits that she have behind her name and the re- the records that she broke, her, her and Ike, when they were working together, is crazy. And then when she came out with that, what's love got to do with it? That basically changed yeah. the game. You know, she, it took, took her to another level, to another plateau. You know, she gets, she deserves all the roses and all the flowers because she was great. You know what I mean? She, and she suffered a lot. You know what I mean? That like the movie display, she went through a lot, you know, but I still give credit to her career with Ike and credit to her career after Ike. So, yeah, no, she was, that's she's a legend for sure. Amazing. I, you know what always impressed me just as a kid watching her? She was always in such good shape. I think yeah. like she had like a she had like a six pack or something. Like she would really and she sang from her diaphragm. And when she sung, you knew it was from her from her gut because it did something to you with whatever yeah. song that she was singing. You know what I'm saying? And to actually get a chance to watch the movie itself, it. It, it, if that's something that somebody went through that and to be able to overcome that because that's domestic violence and it's finest, you know what I'm saying? And then still to be able to beat the odds on that, man, it's just amazing that her her will, her willpower and, and, and her greatness, man, it's, it's crazy, man. Shout out to Tina Turner and may she rest in peace for real. Yeah, rest in peace. And I will, and I will, and I will just, just to kind of, kind of still stay on the subject, but um, life is just so short. I feel as uh as as like we were saying, giving roses, uh, it's tough when we give roses when individuals pass away. Uh, but we can also take time and opportunities to uh give roses while individuals is here. So if it's someone may have a loved one, you know, who may be dealing with, you know, maybe cancer or whatever it may be, just dealing in bad situations, I think it's sometimes best and not over a text message, over a call or or even pulling up on them. Uh, for us to give individuals roses as they're here. And like I said, you guys are my brothers, man. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. Uh, but, man, I appreciate you guys. I'm going to give y'all both your roses. I appreciate you guys as fathers. I appreciate you guys as husbands. I appreciate you guys as leaders, as as coaches. I appreciate you guys as businessmen. Uh, I appreciate you guys, you know, for, for just your drive, your brotherhood, you know, your friendship. Yesterday, Lord put something on my heart just to pray for individuals, uh, uh, pray for black men. Um, um, in my life, you know, um, and like I said, I called out both of you guys' name, um, doing my prayer, you know, and so that's just me just giving roses while y'all here, man. Salute y'all, see what y'all doing, keep it up. Respect, bro, too, man. Respect, bro. Too, man. And I mean, if 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 we can elaborate on that just a little bit, I, I'm really big on that. As you guys notice with me, I've always, like I said, I created chats with some strong um black men that are in it. Um, that we, you know, the, the chat that we're in and we, not only do we talk about sports, but it's about, um, you know, stocks and bonds and just everyday life and try to get together and do things, man, because at the end of the day, man, I think we're better together. 
I like right. I, I'm a firm believer of that. And you never know what somebody else may be going through. And just being around those people can provide something that's encouraging. You know what I'm saying? And just like even with different conversations with me and RK had this with us being able riding together, talking together, some of the stuff that I didn't know was heavy on his heart. But I just got to be there as not only as him being my brother, but my brother-in-law naturally as well. You know what I'm saying? And just obviously, you know, you know, Dwayne, we've been through a lot in the fact of, you know, just learning how to grow and make it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's much respect. And like I said, well, I mean, we're, that's why we're all doing this cast together. You know what I'm saying? Because great minds do think alike. And I salute you two gentlemen as well. Much love and respect. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I can't do nothing but second everything that you guys said, you know what I mean? I appreciate you guys to the fullest. I mean, it, it's, it's rare that you get a chance to really fellowship. And I think this, that's something that we actually need to show the world is that us brothers can fellowship and have discussions and, and it's all love, you know what I mean? And nobody should feel any any kind of way about it. It's all love, no matter what, you know what I mean? There's no pressure, there's no there's no pushing. It's just, hey, we love you, whatever it is, you know what I mean? We Whatever way you go, we support you. And whatever decision you make, we support you and we got love. It's all blessings, it's all love. That's all no, that, That's real. I got, I, got, I got a question though, since we brought it up. And I need you guys to answer this right now. Who made the role look the most like the actual person. Was it Angela Bassett as Tina Turner? Was it Jamie Foxx as Ray? Or was it Will Smith as Muhammad Ali? Ooh. Give me an in, in order from one to three. Man, I'm not going to lie to you. I never I never lived through the life uh, of Ray, but I'm almost positive that uh, like, <laughs> yeah, he, he made... He made. He, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. Look, I'm not gonna <laughs> right. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, Angela Bassett did her thing in that, but sheesh. Uh, Ray Ray's always one of my all time favorites, so I'm gonna have to go Ray. I mean, Will did his thing in Ali, also. Uh, uh, the thrill of Manila. Look, hey, he did his thing. He, look, the champ is here. He did yeah. his thing, but I'm gonna have to go with Ray. That's what. That's me personally. So what? So what's your order? I'm going to go Ray, uh, Ali, and then I'm going to go Tina Turner. Okay, okay. Mm. I, uh, the co- I'm, I'm going to go Ray. I, I, you know, thinking about it, I mean, I feel like I know Ray Charles because of that role that Jimmy Agreed. Fox did. It's crazy because you think about how he did Ray and how he was able to, how he was able to catch, capture not just, not just the speech, but his mannerisms and everything about him, how he approached, even the way he talked to women, and you know what I'm saying, and how he handled that. Let me let me let me check the wrist, baby. Let me check the wrist. Let me, let me check the wrist. <laughs> All of that, right? All of that. So I, I gotta go number one with Ray and then Tina Turner, man. Angela Bassett did her thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Rolling on the river. She was she was doing all the choreography and everything, taking it back to the old days, doing all that old stuff. Yeah, I gotta give her her props, right? So I would. I would say those are that's a close one and two, but I I give I give Jamie Foxx the slight edge. No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna go Tina Turner. I'm gonna go Angela Bassett, Tina Turner one, Ray two, okay. and Will Smith three. Okay, I, I'll just go like that. Are we are we sleeping on Will as Ali though? Because it looked just like young Muhammad Ali. I agree. We, we forgot that that was Will Smith. Or if we threw a monkey wrench in there, can we go Denzel as Malcolm X? Because I honestly, one. I honestly thought Denzel was Malcolm yeah. X. I, I actually, like you said, I feel like I knew Malcolm X by the role. Like, I, <laughs> right. I've never, I've never saw nothing. I don't think quite like that. Those four are some of the best actors in yeah. the world's history, too. And they're all, I mean, in that case, African American. But it's just that perspective. It made you feel like, yeah, you knew the person. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jamie Foxx was phenomenal. I, if I win an order, man, I got to go Malcolm X one, Ray Charles, <laughs> Ray and Tina naked. But Will was so good as Ali, dog. I just, ah, it's hard for me, bro. It's hard for me. It's That's hard tough. for me. That so I'm gonna ask the people though out there. Give us your order. Not um um um. Denzel is Malcolm. Um, Angela, Angela Bassett, Bassett is Tina Turner. 
um, Will Smith is Muhammad Ali and Jamie Foxx is Ray. I really love to hear some feedback on that. Yeah. I think I, I think that's something we come back to. That's kind of tough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, Ray was. Uh, don't forget, uh, Jamie Fox was in there as Bundini Brown too. <laughs> yeah, and, and yes, he was, man. My, yes, he was. Yeah, he was. I couldn't take. I couldn't take his hair, man. Hey, <laughs> what's the trainer? As a matter of fact, that's what he was. You're right. Right. Yeah, for sure. That was crazy. <laughs> Hey man, man, that that that's that's actually that's actually really tough. What I really think about it, those guys all deserve an Oscar to me, based yeah. off the roles that they played. Because man, it's hard to emulate or imitate somebody else to a T where somebody thinks they're them. Yeah, that's un- un- unbelievable. And what's her name? Chadwick Bowman did uh did um did Jackie Robinson too, in uh in forty two. Did he? Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He did. See, I, 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 I didn't. I, didn't, I haven't saw that. He did a good job in, in Jackie Robinson in Forty Two too. He also did like, Thurgood. He did, did Thurgood Marshall too. Remember, I liked it, that role a little bit better. Really? Uh, yeah, Chadwick Boseman Thurgood Marshall was good. I mean, I, it, it, I'm not sure if he got Thurgood Marshall's mannerisms or anything like that, but I did like the. I did appreciate the fact that he brought a lot of his story to life, which I didn't. I didn't know. But for sure. Did he did he did he capture his essence? I don't know because I don't know Thurgood Marshall like that. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like we felt like we didn't know Ray like that, but we knew Ray. Like I feel like I know <laughs> Ray. Like maybe, maybe, like, like maybe I'm gonna make I'm, I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's Ray Ray Charles, man. That's crazy, man. Hey, another another topic I want to touch bases on, man. Um. The driver's license in the digital wallet, man. Can anybody speak Gee. to that? Talk to me, Gee. man. This is something that um, this is something that I think is going to be big, man. Because um, you know, first of all, everybody knows that you can put your, you know, if you go to a concert or something, you can purchase a ticket, right? You can add it to your phone to the wallet in your phone now. You know what I mean? So there's been things like that, like concert tickets or movie tickets or something like that. So you can just scan your phone when you get there. Even even your uh, flight, you know, you can have your flight, your boarding pass in your <laughs> digital wallet or right. rewards cards. But this is the first time they have like a government document, a, a driver's license added to a digital wallet on a phone. And that's a major leap. And that just shows the direction that we're going. And um, I mean, I guess you could say it was already happening with the bank cards, but to have a government document in your in your phone, that's like crazy. You know what I mean? A government document in your phone is crazy. I don't, I think, I think this is a, a, a game changer. And I think the only thing that I can see that is lacking is a standardization between all the wallets where if I have an iPhone today and I go and get a, a, a galaxy tomorrow, then everything should automatically transfer over to that wallet. I shouldn't have to start a new wallet. Right. But the fact that I can have that information in my phone now, in my iPhone, I think that's, I, I, you know, it, people could take it. Some people going to talk about it and say it's the worst thing ever. Like this is yeah. the start of, you know, something wrong. I just see it as a game changer in general. And so, I, you so, know. So, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be one of them ones that kind of, I ain't going to say flip to the other side about it, uh, but it does get me wondering as if, um, like we know our phones, we could be talking about a topic, whether it's sports, whether it's uh uh, furniture, whether it's where there's food around us, and we can go on our phones and and search the web, and immediately the, those ads for those different things that we were speaking of in groups, it will pop up on our phone. So obviously, we know that our that our phones kind of are like tracked some way somehow. Um, is this another way of kind of pinpointing individuals in certain areas by using your phone? But then not only that. Um, I think it was T-Mobile who had to breach in their network who the, all the documents and stuff was kind of, or people's information was kind of hacked and kind of stolen. I don't know if it was, it was either Verizon or T-Mobile it was one of those companies kind of had their, uh, had their um, customers information kind of hacked and stolen. And so that's what really gets me pondering and thinking like, man, is it something that's necessary and needed? I think it's cool. I think it's something that's real cool. Um, I work at a barbershop and it's like, I probably get paid 80% of clients 
uh, now pay digitally, whether it's them scanning their phones uh, with their bank card, whether them sending me cash app, whether them sending me Venmo, whether they send me, and they're all doing it digitally from their phones because their cards are already connected to their phones. But this is another, this is, I, I do I get, do I think it's a opportunity for us to not carry like wallets no more? I think so. Cause everything, once again, everything's going digital anyway. I probably, like I said, I probably get 20% of clients who really pay with cash. I think people who carry cash nowadays, you either doing a, you're your own business owner or you're doing something under the table. I mean, that's the only <laughs> way cash nowadays. Cause I ain't just going to no ATM to get no money out unless I'm going to, I, I take that back unless I go to gamble too. Cause I might gamble here and there, but that's the only way I'm going to get cash out is if I'm going to go gamble or if I'm going to, you know, make, make a jug or something, but that'd be the only reason why. But I think everything's done digitally. I think it's something in a wave that we are on. Um, I think it's necessary and needed. I just don't know how safe and secure uh, uh, um, all that stuff could be. Um, that's just my opinion. Because next they're going to say, if we can do digital uh, wallets with uh, IDs, are we going to be doing digital passports? Are we going to be doing digital social security numbers? You know, what? what's next, you know? And so I just think how, how safe um, is it? That's just my opinion. I think it's. I think that's exactly the point. I think that's exactly where we're going. Is is going to be digital everything. Your your phone is going to be that wallet. There's the paper aspect of it is going away. Um, and that and I, I think that's a, a good point that you're making too about the fact that a lot of that um um you know there's there's a concern there that how secure are these wallets? How safe are these wallets? Is is Google still reading? Are, are they going to know? everything about my driver's license and bank cards and everything, but I add them to this wallet. And is, is, are they keeping that separate from what they're normally doing? Because I don't want, like you said, I don't want them using my information in my wallet for ad, right. for advertising to me. I don't want you to know how much money is in my account so you can advertise me products. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or, 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 or they just, um, statistics is showing all, man, it's black individuals who are around this age only got this much because they're already located what your information is. So that's just my opinion. Yeah, man, that's a good, good perspective from both of you, man. I, I'm gonna carry my my license in my wallet still. That's just <laughs> who I am. Now, like I said, I got the digital option to have my debit card. I don't got no money on that, and then I don't do that. Like I said, yeah. I got the debit card myself. That's just the way I move. I mean, it may work for other people, but if you lose that cell phone. Then is, is all is all your all your information gone, or how do you get issued a new license? Is it just when you get issued a new phone? I mean, it's just I think there's a I agree with you, RK. That's the direction you're headed. I just don't put all my A's in one batch. I, that just ain't me. Like I yeah. said, I do have the multiple options of the cash apps, the Venmo, the um, the Zelle, and um, what what is the other one? What is it? Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, and there's one more. PayPal? No, not PayPal. What is it? Or is it just three? Yeah, Zelle, Zelle Cash App. Uh, yeah, Venmo. Venmo. Maybe that. Yeah. Maybe that's just the three. I just, I just that's have the three. Where? Yeah, I mean, but obviously you got to have that connected to it. But like yeah. I said, I they are trying to go with everything paperless. But that goes back to the same thing where we talk about currency. Like nobody carries cash, so like, what? what why do they keep making it? So then yeah. what it what, what if what if it happens to where no more cash is made and then other people have money in their account that may not actually be theirs, but how do you determine that the, the wrong thing was put digitally into the what to the to the numbers? Man, you see, you, you see what I'm saying? If I, I want to be able to, if I want to go to the bank and take out from my ATM and know, or if I go in the bank and say I want a certain amount of cash, I want them to count that in front of me with the <laughs> amount of cash that I'm taking out. That's just me. So hey, what yeah. if you you're not you're not one that goes through the uh, grocery store and still ringing up the stuff at the at the at the at the stand? You ain't self checking out. No, I'm not self checking out. They've got to they got to <laughs> bag my stuff. They got to bag my stuff. I'm, I'm gonna put out, bro. That guy said I'm always going to the T. Don't get me wrong. No, not, no, just with just with, but it it also depends though because some stores don't have the the, the regular lines open with the people. So I mean, like you, you, you got, you got, you got, you got to go, you got to go self check. You got to go self check. So it kind of depends on. I'd rather be face to face with the people ringing it up, so I can see I'm getting my discounts. <laughs> that's just that's just me though. 
That's just me. Yeah. No. I, and I, I'm kind of straddling the fence. Like, right, I, I'm still sh- I'm, I'm still checking myself out if I can. If it's not, I'll self check out. But if 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 this if there, if there's somebody there, I'm gonna go to the aisle. You know what I'm saying? And let them bring me out. But hey, I'm, and, I'm so. Look, I, hey, I'm on. I, I almost call in the orders. The wife picks up. Look, Target orders. Look, oh yeah, yeah. I'm calling go Safeway orders. Look, I'm calling and going. Look, that's that's where you catching me at. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, man. Like I said, it's the wave of the future, and I don't think. I mean, like I said, I think it, what it does, and and I can take it a step further because obviously I'm in the security business. So just to kind of take that a little bit further, everybody wants a security camera. But what happens if they cover up your security camera or they have a disguise on? Then what? If you don't have home security, those cameras do zero for you. So everybody wants the quick quick fix because they can see the camera. But you want to see somebody just break in? Is that the (laughs) answer? Is that what you're watching somebody just do it? Or do you get the whole kit and caboodle, and then you have the cameras for yourself. That's just, you know, that's how I look at it because everybody wants the quick fix or the instant gratification of the least resistance as possible. And I think you could do that in some facets um, and they may try to force your hand with it, but as long as it's still available, I think the best of both worlds works for me. That's just in my opinion. Yeah. No, I I agree, right? But, you know... and I got to say, you know, some of our conversations we've had recently, we've talked about AI and the way that they're talking about AI is that once it, if it gets to the point of hacking, you know, if they start using it efficiently for hacking, then are these digital wallets going to continue to be safe, even if they're safe now? Right. Or are we putting everything at risk of, you know, since our since our identity is going to be all digital? Or, you know, everything about us, you know, our, our banking information, our identification information, our registration with the government, with, whether it be driver's license or passports. Once that becomes all digital, doesn't it become susceptible to being hacked at that point? You know what I mean? Mm, mm. I, if I got my card in my wallet, you know, the only person that has that identification card is me and the information on the DMV. So if the DMV gets hacked, that's one thing. But that once I have that card, that card is me for the most part. Unless somebody yeah. take, unless you do like that movie, Catch Me If You Can, and create a, your own driver's license. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it kind of goes, you know, it gets to the point of, I mean, we're seeing people's identities getting take, taken all the time. Right. What, is it going to get to the point that people can just, I know there's layers of security there to prevent it from happening, but is it going to get to the point that people can actually access or break the encryption on your phone and take your digital identity and run with it? Right. You know, clone it, clone it to a different phone. What happens then? There's, there's a lot of concerns there, and I don't think they're educating the public on what they're doing to safeguard it. Mm, that's 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 a really really good perspective, and that's a really good answer because at the end of the day, you're only gonna they're only gonna tell you so much just to keep you intrigued a little bit. They think when you look at it, it makes it seem like it's the easiest way to do things because you you don't have to deal with losing a debit card. And I ain't gonna lie. Um, It ain't happened in the last 10 years, but before, I ain't gonna lie, I used to lose my debit card all the time and then just have to get a replacement. It's just based being careless. But as you get older, you learn that it takes seven days for you to get it. You don't wanna have to go in the bank with your ID to get money out every time because you want to be able to go to a drive up ATM and take the money out. You know what I'm saying? So again, I just think with this situation, I think you bring up a very good point, RK, like how safe is it or how safe do we know it is? Yeah. It it, it looks good because it's in your phone, but at the same token, man, um, everything that we see in our phone, like, like Dwayne said, man, you can be looking at something. Then all of a sudden it'll pop up on when you're scrolling like through social media it's like you might have been looking for a a, a leather coat and then all of a sudden it shows you the different places where the leather coats are at or where they're on sale at man how do they know it's crazy it's crazy we was in we was in ikea uh 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 uh, one of our rentals we uh remodeling it so we was in ikea getting closets and i don't know if i searched ikea closet 
Uh, but we was in Ikea and, and I look like you say, I popped up on Instagram or pop up on Facebook. And I'm like, Ikea ads is popping up. How, how did you even know I was even in Ikea? Or was you, the, the GBS is still turned on. It's like crazy. And, but then, but then this is a pro to the same situation is when we went to Ikea, we was returning something and I had left my, so the wife came out to the car. And when she came out to the car, we were returning something and I came from physical therapy. So I didn't have my wallet on me. Um, and we pulls off, but when we get to Ikea, my debit card is the card that's connected to the take, to taking the, taking the stuff back. So when we get to the register, the lady's like, uh, well, what card is connected to, uh, uh, the account for the, for, for when we, uh, rung up the receipt. And she was like, oh, we need that. We need that card. So luckily, you know, the wife has snapped a picture of like sent previously uh, a long time ago. I snapped a picture of that debit card uh, for buying like tickets or whatever it may have been. So I was able to type that information in and put and, and add that card directly to my wallet so I could use my phone as a digital card. And when I waved it over my phone, I was able to get the return just by That's waving crazy. my phone. The That's thing crazy. about that though is you're able to go into your bank account and shut your card on and off. So right after I use it or right after I connect it to my account. I just shut it off um, from my phone digitally when I when I use it. But think about what you said, Wayne D. You just said you just waved your card. Just I imagine just wave, waving your phone. <laughs> waving your phone waved and automatically it. money money either comes back or it goes away. Right. Technology yeah. is technology is undefeated. That's yeah. all I say. I mean, yeah. I, I even think about it at the gas stations now. You don't you don't really need to go in the gas station for anything if you're just getting gas. Like I said, it's either you could you could you could either do the quick one where it has the, the magnet or you can put it in the thing. And it's like yeah. sooner or later, there's going to be where you can't get into those gas stations. Well, what if it's a gas station that doesn't have a store connected to it? There'll be an AI standing right there surveilling. <laughs> you got to just get your gas that way. I mean, like I said, the future obviously is undefeated, but technology is, is, is truly at the top of this game right now. It's yeah. truly at the top of this game. Yeah. And, you know, it's what you were talking about, you know, wearing D sound like it's a, a few different aspects of it that people don't really realize because, you know, your Wi-Fi that that creates digital exhaust, you know, that that Google's, you know, whatever type of phone you're using is watching that. So it's, it's not just GPS, it's your Wi-Fi, whatever Wi-Fi you're, you connect to. So that's probably how they knew you're in, in an Ikea because you can walk oh, through the mall and as yeah. you pass stores in the mall, that Wi-Fi connects to it. Next thing you know, you're getting ads from them different stores in the mall too. And they do that yeah. off of Wi-Fi. Then the other aspect of it, which is the digital wallet aspect of it, it was just as easy as to type the numbers in to your phone and it, co it connected everything up. And, you know, I wonder how, you know, you know, I get back to the security aspect of it. How secure is it going to be? Because the thing is about, um, the thing is about cybersecurity is that it, it's evolving all the time. You know what I mean? There's a lot of trust in the system and it's always evolving. So if it's always evolving, like I said, how secure is it at this point where you're asking us to put our information in now? Is it as secure as it's supposed to be? Or is or we or you have some inherited or embedded trust in the system that I don't know about? Like, oh, the bank trusts the phone, and I supposed I'm supposed to trust that the phone did the proper <laughs> vetting with the bank first to set this system up and maybe they, you know, we hoping that they did, that they did, but they're not letting us know if they did or they didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's interesting, man. Tell us what you guys think about that, man. Um, in all honesty, we'd love to see the comments and some feedback um, in the comments of just kind of giving us your perspective. Um, do you think there's a plus? Do you think it's a minus? Give me the, the pros and cons of what you feel about that digital wallet. Um, touching bases on another thing is kind of like a, I'm going to say a sad subject for me here for just a moment. Um, the Lakers were swept. And that's a great moment for Arcade to, to hear that fall off your lips. Hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very, well, he can't say much because his, his two, his, one of his teams eliminated, it, um, eliminated one and then the Lakers eliminated his other team. So it's, he's in the same boat as us. Yeah, but, so um, really, you know, right, right. But <laughs> Denver didn't have to do them like that, though. <laughs> that's, yeah. I'm going to go on record and say this so that people can see it. Everybody sees it across the globe. The Joker 
is one of the best big men I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Ooh. He's one of the best big men I've ever seen in my life. He Ooh. has, he possesses every skill that you would want in a, in, in a center. And he does it where he's unorthodox and it looks like he's off balance. He's a real hooper. Shout out to the Joker. He's one of the best. He's one of the best in the NBA, too. He's a top 10 player in the NBA. But I saw with my own eyes that, and Anthony Davis is, he's really, really good at basketball. But it was just, it's a tough matchup, man. The Joker and Jamal Murray, he played like he's one of the best point guards in the world. And it just, man, they didn't let, they didn't let the Lakers LeBron get a win. That, that hurt me a little bit, man, because I thought for sure they were under something, man. But, you know, it, it happens. You guys give me your perspectives. Wait, before before we jump into it, let me ask you this, though. Um, I've heard I've heard it, you know, I've heard it said about the Joker that because he won all those MVPs, but he had never been to the finals or is it that he never won the finals, that those MVPs are kind of mm, they're not really. A solid. What What do you guys think about that part? Before we move into the Laker aspect of it, the joke. Well, I think I think that's a terrible narrative. Whoever said that, if it was on a sports show, they should be be reprimanded because there's a lot of MVPs that had that hasn't won championships or or didn't or had or didn't win a championship. Russell Westbrook was an MVP. James, James Hard was James Hard was an MVP. They never won championships. You but know what multiple, I'm saying? Does it multiple. justify the multiple well, MVP? Well, I mean, what, again, being the best player in the NBA that year doesn't always mean that you're the best team to win that year. RK, Steve Nash had multiple. Oh. And he's never won a championship. And oh. Embiid won this year, and he's at home too. So mm. it's just like you can't take away that his plus minus – um, and, you know, basketball has a lot of analytics. I, I'm more of an eye test. I got a chance to see with my own eyes that this seven foot two Serbian cerebral machine couldn't be stopped yeah. in, in, in any perspective. And, and, and guess what he did? He rebounded the ball. He scored the ball and he passed the ball. He had multiple triple doubles in that series. So, I mean, there's nothing you can say negative. Nothing. You got it. Steal your hat to him and say salute. I see. Man, him. that's it. it. Should should he be the face of the league? I, <laughs> I, 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 he's one of the faces. Yeah, I mean, but him and him and Joy Embiid has brought the big man back. The big man had died for a second since Shaq. He they, he he they they're they're battling that. So if you think about it, the last three MVPs have been centers. So that they're putting the big man back on the map. And, and those. Good, where we put Giannis at, because Giannis is up there, but, you know, he's that center four point guard role, but Giannis is even a seven-footer. And he's a man. He's a man. He's a man. You could really say the last five MVPs. Yeah. And, and that, that's just, I mean, like I said, but to answer your question, RK, not to get off topic, that it there, there's no way, no how the guy has, his stats have proven it. Period. People may not like his style of play because people don't like bigs necessarily, but he's a big that's dribbling. He's bringing the ball up the court like he is the point guard. I saw Jamal Murray give him the ball. You don't yeah. do that with centers. <laughs> hey, I've seen Joker come off a screen, bro. Right. A pin down. A pin he came down. Off a pin. Like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's nothing I can, like I said, I mean, I, I'll be the first one to admit it. I was wrong. They, I, I didn't think there's. I didn't think in my mind at all that they can sweep them after after how the Lakers played against Golden State. But it was a different matchup, and Denver has a little bit of everything. And the fact of defensive guys, role players, superstars, bucket getters, people that know their role, and exactly. they they got they they come in waves. Exactly. They almost remind me uh, somewhat of that. Um... That 2011 Dallas Mavericks team, when they had Dirk as the engine, but they had Steve Nat or, or uh, Jason Kidd who knew his role, uh, uh, the Jet, Jason Terry who knew his role, Sean Marion who knew his role, Tyson Chandler who knew their role. They had a whole bunch of players who just knew their role 
and just play well together. That's almost like what this Denver team is looking like. Like they just know they roll. That's a good. That's a good perspective. I think they're a little bit better than that team, but I I, I hear I hear what you're saying. They just got. I think they're a better team, but I'm just Jamal, saying, Jamal Murray, man, he easily in that he could have been the MVP of that series too. He, he was taking yeah. over in the fourth quarter every game. It felt it felt like I'm like, man, this is unbelievable. A sweep is crazy. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. That was in the crazy. in the Western Conference Finals, a sweep is crazy. I. I can't wrap my head around it. Does a sweep hurt his legacy? Nah, LeBron is, LeBron is a made man, I mean, and he's done what he's done. <laughs> like I said, I mean, for him to play in year 20 at this high of a level, name another person um, that's 38 years old, um, that played 20 years in the league, that could, that could play at the level he's played at. It, 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 it's very few at the level that he's played at. I mean, you have, the so Kobe, you have the Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. I don't know if Kobe was at this level. Oh, yeah, yeah Kobe he was. was done. No, no, Kobe, no, no, you, you got to look up Kobe's stats at 38. When you guys get a chance, go look at those. It, it'll it. surprise you. It, it is, it'll surprise you. It'll surprise you. Man. It'll surprise I mean, you. He was, but man. like, by the, but like 20, LeBron that's is. Jordan. That's not the Washington Wizards Jordan. That's not the Jordan we remember. So, but I, I know he was old. I know Vince Carter played a long time. I know Dirk played a long time. I think Reggie Miller might have played like 18. Uh, um, uh, uh, old boy from Utah, he had 20. Uh, I think, did Tim Duncan play 20? I think he might have been 19. Uh, a lot of years, but he, Tim Duncan wasn't averaging like like LeBron still averaged like 27, 27 points a game. And let, let, let's not let it be tainted or shaded that he just broke the scoring record and he's not a scorer. At least that's what the people say. Right. Yeah. So you got to put that everything in perspective. I don't think it hurts his legacy. Um, I think that he's just adding to it. I mean, he's made, he's putting records further out with him still playing for somebody to even have the opportunity of breaking him just because his longevity in the league. And granted, he's not Miami LeBron James, but he's still my in my in my opinion the second best player to ever play. In my opinion. <laughs> So, in my opinion, is this an indictment against AD? Because I mean, man, I mean, if LeBron is at that age, he shouldn't have to carry, or he shouldn't have to be the motor for the team. He shouldn't be have to be the catalyst for the team. He should be a, a solid number two, a se- solid second option at this point, right? He's still LeBron James. He's always number one, but people say he should be two. But I, AD did. I thought I thought AD played well. I thought AD played well. I, I mean, like I said, he just was up against a seven foot two cerebral assassin, which is the Jokers. It's tough. AD had a couple, he had a 40 point game. He had a a 30 and 20 point game. It's just that it was just collectively as a team, Denver just kind of overpowered them in position by position. But AD, if you look, if if somebody has access to a phone right now, if look up AD stats for the Western Conference Finals, I think it'll surprise you of what he was at, of what he averaged. Yeah, numbers. He had yeah. numbers. He might have been like a 20, 27, 27 and 15, 27 and 12. He was good. He was solid. Like yeah. you say, he just ran up against, he just ran up against a machine. And they but, were well filled. Yeah, but I, 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 man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go the other way with it. I, I appreciate I, I understand he got numbers though, but you know, this is the Western Conference front, conference finals. This is a chance to to get it's for all the chips, man. You gotta dominate. And if you're going to dominate, you're going to have to get out there and, 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 you know, Jokic, you're the MVP, but I'm here. You know what I mean? And we're not, we're not taking an L. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting the, we see Jimmy Buckets play off Jimmy, do it every game that he can. He well, goes right out there. Now, he, but right now that series is 3-2. So we don't know yeah, where yeah, the moment, where, where it's going right now. That's all I'm saying. It's like AD and not to cut you off. So I'm going to let you finish your point. Forgive me. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Cause well, my, my thing is to say, to, to say, he did dominate, but somebody dominated more than him. <laughs> yeah, but that means he it, wasn't dominant. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't take away he just wasn't the most dominant mm. because he was dominant. You can't average 30 in a series and not be dominant. It's just that the Joker did it from all perspectives and he made the other players better. I think it was about 27, Kane. Okay? Did you look it up? Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'd have to, I had to go out of it and look it up, but I think it was about 27. Okay. I got you covered. 
Yeah. But yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. I just say he was more dominant. Okay, that's all. I mean, yeah. it's like it's like the Joker. I mean, it's 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 their time to, to see what happens. I mean, they're what they're waiting to see what happens with Boston and Miami. Well, they're duking it out right now. Yeah. I think it's I, I don't when you go back to your question, you know, Wayne D about LeBron's legacy, I kind of wonder about that because you know <laughs> you know. I mean, we, we can say, you know, all the uh, caveats to his career, you know what I mean? And, and I don't want to seem like I'm a LeBron, like I'm an all in all out LeBron hater. That's not the case. It, it, sell, it sounds like it, though. I'm just, I, I, I mean, I'm just not, a lot of times I just don't buy into the narrative. Like, if you're the MVP on one hand, if you won, you're going to be the MVP. So if you lose, you got to take that L. You know what I mean? You got to carry that L. That's around your neck. Because you were gonna, you were gonna get all the chips. You're gonna get all the accolades if, if it went the other way. So he's gonna have to carry that. Um, and when you look at, he wasn't him, MVP. But I'm just saying, if he if he won, if they won that series or, or won the whole, if they won all the chips, they won it, win and won and won uh won the trophy at the end of the season. He would have got the MVP, and they'd have been like, oh, LeBron is the greatest this and the greatest that. So if he gets swept. You got to carry that L. You got to take that with you. you. You don't think? I think he is. I think he. I think. I think he's taking that. It, it, it and, and it's gonna. And it's gonna it's, tarnish his legacy. I don't. I don't think it tarnishes. So, when you talk about at this stage of the game that he's won four championships, right? And yeah. to be playing at such a high level still, yeah. I don't think your legacy can be tarnished because you have pretty much all the records. I mean, if 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 your whole career is perspective based based off of a championship, then he missed another championship. But he has four of them, yeah. With four with with, with, with four finals MVPs. Yeah, so I mean, so, is right now you're playing. Yeah, you're playing to win championships, but there's teams that are younger th- that are bringing it, and Denver proved that. Denver, this is their first time ever getting over the hump. Really, they've been number one seeds out of the West. Number one or number two the last couple of years, and they get knocked off like in the second round. Now that yeah. everybody's help, now that everybody's healthy, and the Joker's in his prime, and Jamal Murray's back, it's a tough load to deal with. They were number one the whole year. Now people say regular season don't matter. You still got to play the game. Yeah, you still got to play the game. So then we're not talking about an eighth seed Denver. We're talking about the number one seed. Everybody just believed the Lakers because it's LeBron James. But yeah. at the same token, they the, the the Denver was better than the Lakers as a team. And that was proven through the whole year. And the playoffs, they continued to prove it. And my hat's off to the Denver Nuggets. That's, in my opinion, my perspective. Yeah. 28 and 14. That's not dominant. That's, just, that's that's yeah. That's a solid performance, man. That's a lot. But then, well, like said, go, go, what did the jo- what did the Joker average, Wayne D? Uh, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> it was it was he almost averaged a triple double. That's just yeah. Twenty four eight six. Yeah, that's wild. What you got for us, bro? You you look you looking it up? I'm looking it up right now for you. Okay. I'm so just, I'm you good? You good? Okay. I want to ask the people out there that are that are actually watching this cast because RK wants to. I think he wants it to tarnish his legacy. <laughs> hey, um, no, I really don't. I okay, really don't. Okay. I, I want to get that out there. I think okay. LeBron is a great player. I think he's a great player, but you know, I, I you know, being I guess I'm an old head when I say Jordan is Jordan that you know what I'm saying. But I'll take that. But I think LeBron is a great player. Not. On the court and off the court, but I think sometimes you know we give him so much, so much. It just has has he not earned everything that he's gotten? Not that he's been given? So not okay, everything. so so why, Space Jam why was I... given. Space Jam was given to him, and he didn't earn that because that was that was terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't do him like, so, do like that. But wow. that's, but that's Jordan's legacy. He's stepping into Jordan's legacy in that, at that point, right? If they decided to give him the role after 20 years of Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan wasn't going to do it no more. So who who, who else was going to do it? I, I'm, that's not that's not for me to say. No, but I'm you saying, brought it. You brought it up. So I'm. But I'm saying you. That's what I'm saying. He, he's so. There's a lot of things 
that we know, like, you know, when I look at when I look at Michael Jordan's career, you know, maybe, you know, like you said, the end of his career isn't what LeBron's end of his career is. But I know that the, there's a lot of things at the peak of his career, career, his prime that I compare LeBron to. And they're not exactly there. There's even I even there's a, I even give the case to Kobe, who I'm not really, you know, rest his soul, but I'm not really the biggest fan of Kobe. I wasn't a fan of Kobe at the time, but I give respect to his career and his passion to win. Okay. There's certain there things Joker about was, LeBron that Joker there's even certain things. 14 and 11. What's that? What? 29, 14, and 11. Yeah. So did the assist is what the but Anthony Davis outplayed him in points and rebounds up. No, nah, they were they were both 28. One was 28, 14, and uh one was 29, 14. Joker was almost 30, though. He was like yeah. two points off of 30. Mm. Yeah, that was that, that, they canceled each other out like we said they would in the earlier podcast. It's just that Jamal Murray was the X Factor. Mm. Yeah. He was the X Factor. But back to you, RK. Um <laughs> You said the man has it deserved. So he was the most criticized and the most pressure at any athlete ever in sports that has been, that's been, that's been put on his shoulders and he's overcame all the adversity and he's Agreed. lived up to the, he's lived up to the hype. So again, why doesn't he deserve? I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. Right. I'm just saying that there's some more, there's, there's extra added on to it that I don't think that is all justified. That's all. Okay. I think there's, I think, you know, him being the scoring champion, that's, that's great. You know what I mean? He he scored all those points. That's great. <laughs> well, the record that they said that would never be broken. That was yeah, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He, he's, he's done that. He, he scored, he did that. I mean, but you know, they say, I've always heard before that scoring, before the scoring champion thing was done, I've always heard the hardest thing to do is three P. I've heard that from so many champions. The hardest thing to do is three P. And the only person that we know that's put two of those together is Michael Jordan. There's yeah, a lot of he, right. He, he's the only one to put two together for sure. There's yeah. a lot of things about yeah. Michael Jordan's career and performance. You know, with a lot of he had a lot of contemporaries that that, that you know I even hear get downgraded now. Patrick Ewing, people that he played against, Charles Barkley, all these guys that that, that were they were good back then, but all of a sudden they're I'm here the way that people categorize them now like they're bums now. Then I. No, they're, they're top fifty, top fifty players. Their dream team won. Exactly. Hey, before, before we so, go any further, you said the three P with Jordan. What about the eleven P with Bill Russell? Exactly right. They didn't. They didn't win eleven in a row. He won eleven total. They didn't win eleven in a row. I think they won like eight in a row. Well, I, 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 but, the, but, don't, but don't, but don't let me go on record and say that. I would have to double check that. I know. I don't. I know that he has eleven championships. I don't know exactly how many in a row he had. That's something that I got to look up. And I guess let me just let me just end it here with LeBron, man. I I, I think he's a, a phenomenal player. He's definitely one in, one in a generation top tier, right? But I just th- I think there's there's extras put on him, man. Does he deserve it? You know, he he puts he put in the work and he deserves what he gets. You know what I'm saying? But I just I just have this feeling that there's extras put on it, and maybe it's just the the narrative of the NBA trying to you know keep the star, keep the luster of the star there. But I just think there's more put on than, than what it is because, you know, I've 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 seen I've seen the wins, but I also seen the L's, and that's all. And with everybody that, takes L's, but with that being said, okay, do you think because we lived in the in the Jordan era, yeah. um, like that we were kids, but we remember the tail end of of the Jordan era, and then and we see uh, the whole career play out of uh, of LeBron James. Do you think in our lifetimes we'll see any comparison uh, to even like the like the longevity that uh, that uh, LeBron has shown, or or the championship wow uh, dominance that uh, that Jordan has shown? Do you think we could see that in, in another in our generation and another player like come close to those? That's what I would like to see. I seen Kobe try for it though. I seen Le- LeBron seem like he's competitive. But he has that friendly spirit to his competitiveness, which is kind of like it's kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with you, but I'm trying to crush you, which is cool. That that's cool. But I I recognize that 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 dog in in Jordan, that dog in Kobe, and it was just a different type of competitiveness that made me still hold on to my Laker, fresh Laker. You know what I'm saying? Hatred, not really hatred, but 
frustration all these years. You know what I mean? Like, ugh, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to, I, I don't even want to root for the Lakers because of what we went through facing the Lakers. LeBron doesn't, doesn't give me that. I've seen him go from, you know, he, he's been into a, t- a few teams. He's, I don't know. I just, I, I, there's just, there's just, he's great. I give him his props. He's great as a, as an individual player, but there's just something there that I just think that isn't what puts him over the top as the, where I can't just get totally on board as the greatest ever and shut the door on everything. Well, I don't, I don't think that's something that I think that's all based off of the opinion. I mean, I, I mean, obviously there's people that are old, that are older than us that say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And yeah, there's other right. people, the other people that may be older than us that say Bill Russell, um, rest in peace. Then there's mm-hmm. others that may say Michael Jordan, but some say Kobe Bryant's the greatest. Some say yeah. LeBron James is the greatest. Um, so I mean, some people even say Tim Duncan. I mean, because mm-hmm. he was in the same era as Kobe, and he doesn't get enough credit that he yeah. should. You know what I'm saying? He won five Our championships in that, in that era. Mm-hmm. No, one 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 was in LeBron's. I mean, Kobe was still in. The, he was still there. Come on, man. We cannot count Achilles Kobe in that era, bro. <laughs> well, he was still playing hoop. That's all I'm yeah. saying. He was still on the Lakers, the Lakers team. I mean, anybody anybody gets injured, they get injured, but I'm saying he still played, is what I'm saying. Achilles Kobe don't count. Like we hey, that that 60 point exit, man. Come on, man. It was good. <laughs> you said that was a shoot around. That was a shoot around. They was giving that man that stuff. <laughs> Too many stars in the building for him not to show up. Nah, man, he he earned that sixty the hard way. At, at, at the age he wasn't, he, they just they couldn't guard him. That, that I I watched it in its entirety. One, it, the, the crazy thing about it is, is there was one game out of making the playoffs. They should have made the playoffs that year. Was it against? I think it was against Utah. It was either yeah, Utah. They're, they're, they're playing Utah for sure. Yeah, uh-huh. and they, and they were one game out of making the playoffs. And if they would have won, they could have pushed. I think it was like Minnesota that year uh, uh, to making the playoffs. But they didn't even they they lost. They got blown out. It was Utah, yeah. yeah. Hey, it happens. Kobe, no, Kobe, Kobe is what I, I think is what I what, what I say about Kobe. Man, it's weird. He's he's got like a a movie life. His life is gonna make the perfect movie. It's like he's like the James Dean of basketball because he died young, but his story about coming from Italy playing soccer. His first, his dad playing. They, they gonna start to start the movie off short. His dad highlights and his dad hooping and then show him being raised. And it's he's got a movie. His life is a movie, and it's going to be – whenever they put it to film, it's going to be great, I bet. No, no doubt, man. Going to the next topic, though. Hold on, Dave, before you, before you go before you go on that. My, my bad. My, my bad to cut you off. Hey, RK, you were 100% right. And this is one thing that, that bothers me so much is that Legends gets documentaries about them when people play them. Like, Legends get that. When will we ever well, – does Jordan have to pass before we see a movie about him? Because So then he can't say, no one can play me? Probably, because apparently he ain't he ain't signing off on nothing because he just did that he did that air movie and he would not let his face. Yeah, that's real. That movie was good too. I just saw that. Yeah, it was. It was. I thought it, I thought it was a really good movie. And Sonny Sonny Vaccaro put it. He put the bet the house on Michael Jordan. Bet the house on Michael Jordan. He was right. It's a pretty a pretty amazing thing just to kind of see just how it was back in that era and $250,000 was a lot of money back then. That was like multi-million, multi-millions back in 85, 80, 45. Right. And then just how the Jordans, I didn't even know that all the shoe had to be predominantly white. So Michael Jordan broke that barrier too. As you look at the shoes now, they wear any color shoes. There there ain't ain't nothing predominantly (laughs) white on the shoe at all. (laughs) And Phil Knight, he believed in Sonny Ricard, so and then like James Ravlin, all those people played a part, man. And just you know, that was the making of Michael Jordan. And like it, like the mom said, she was the real MVP. Shout out to MJ's mom. Yeah, because she said the shoe is nothing till my son steps foot in it. And she put that out there, and that shook me a little bit when I saw that. It was pretty amazing, though. Yeah. Really good, really good movie. But um. It. Save this brand. <laughs> no, for, for sure. For sure. Phil Knight is Phil Knight is it's never been the same since since then. It's like it's been athlete after athlete after athlete. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Michael Jordan paved that way. He got the likeness 
for every Jordan shoe that's ever been made, he got the likeness from it. What an amazing deal. And that's why he's the greatest. Yep. <laughs> that's why he's the greatest. <laughs> Period. You got to stop, bro. You got to stop. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm willing to bet right now, if I look down at your feet, you might have a pair of his shoes on right now. Percent right, you will, but you. I don't got to <laughs> You won't. I, so this is one thing we were talking about in the shop. I don't get the Jordan ones because I'm like, man, I remember Jordan killed and had 82 points in these babies right here. No, I put the babies on because I'm like, they clean, they match his fit. I'm throwing them on, like, bro. I'm throwing them on and be like, oh, he put the. Why, 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 why don't you do that? Why don't you do that with a pair of Lebrons or a pair of Kobe's because or a pair of Kings? It's, it's not. You can't you can't just wear with casual outfits. For one, them first ones that came out, like I used to hoop in them things, and them babies was at least five to ten pounds on my feet <laughs> when I was definitely <laughs> baby. So look, I'm like, bro, they have you for one, and I'm not gonna be clocking around in clocker knockers like I'm wearing boots all day. For one, them these new ones, I say from like seven on, <laughs> they, they light. but them first babies, they was boots, bro. <laughs> I, remember, I, I, I think I was like I think it was like a brown <laughs> fours or something. I think they had to go a uh, white and gold ones because our team was like uh, white and yellow at Foss. And I remember banging out. I thought I was filthy. I thought I was cold in them babies. But I'm like looking back on them, like bro, them things was the heaviest shoe I've ever put on. <laughs> <That's a terrible laughs> which, which, which brings me back to my 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 main perspective. That's one of the reasons why MJ is the goat because the shoe will never die. It's and the mom and, and the mom and the and the mom said that it's the yeah. market, bro. It's it's it's, market. It's, it's it's more than that too. It's the market. It, it's the name. It's the name behind the brand too. Let's not get that <laughs> twisted. That's, 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 that, that's a that's another subject for another time. Hey, rolling into one of our other favorite sports, boxing. Last Saturday, we witnessed a fight between Devin Haney and Lomachenko. Um, we all watched it together. Yeah, we Give did. me your honest opinion, Wayne D. Um, so so I've had I've had time. My, my my first honest opinion about it was um that Lomo um won the fight. Um and I thought he got at least the opportunity just to get a draw. So if you give him a draw, you still allow Haney to 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 uh, obtain the belt, but at the same time, you say Lomo was getting the best of him. I thought the start of the first maybe four rounds, I thought Devin Haney was um was more of the aggressor. Uh, he was landing a few more body shots. Uh, uh, Lomachenko was trying to fill him out, but I think from rounds for me, the fight turned maybe around six. And I think from about six to twelve, I, I say about five, around five to twelve or five to eleven, I think that's when the the uh, fight kind of changed, and Lomo started kind of taking control of the fight. And as he was taking control of the fight, I thought I thought he won a lot of rounds. Um, that was that was day one, or that was day one. So I thought for sure Lomo won, or I could see the judges uh, uh, giving it a draw. Um, but then I got talking about it a few days later with a few individuals and then just hearing Max Kellerman uh, uh, speak about it when he was speaking about it. And the phrase comes, we all know in order to beat the champ, you got to beat the champ. And so when I was watching the fight and, and he, he was talking about it, he says in a lot of the rounds, when you can't pick uh, who won the round, the, uh, the judge will go with who holds the belts. So if you think it's a draw round and they can't pick who got it, they would automatically just give the, the the round to the to 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 the um to the to the champion, and so I felt when it was when they were going on, and when you really when you really really go back and think about it and look at it, um that that I think um when you think about it that way, I can see how they got their scorecard. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. I, 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 you know, it's funny. It's you know, I, I, I think, I think I was looking for the same result. I thought it was going to be a draw, just because of how how the fight went on. You know what I mean? How it looked like, um, how it looked like Loma, uh, Loma Chico was really, you know, because 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 to be honest, you know, Haney doesn't have that much. He doesn't switch levels that much. He doesn't have that much uh, reflex like 
So he was it was pretty much target practice, target practice for uh, for Lomachenko. He just kept popping him and popping him, you know, giving him a couple of flurries, popping him. I mean, granted, Lomo was a lot smaller, so he didn't have the strength factor to really move him, you know, or really stun him. Like he did it a couple of times, but not nothing really massive to drop him. But, you know, he was getting to him. Um, so I thought it was going to be a draw, but, you know, I guess I can understand where Max Kellerman's perspective is because the round seemed like, it, I mean, the fight was going round for round, back and forth. And in some rounds, it were pretty much, you know, we were having arguments about who who might have won that fight or who might have won that round. And it it wasn't nothing, you know, really groundbreaking. It's no, nobody really got dropped or anything that we could say, oh, yeah, this guy really got, you know, got the best of them or so on. It might be a punch here or a punch there, but it really wasn't nothing massive. So right. I agree with you on that, in that respect. I, and, um, you know, I, you know, I picked Haney to win the fight and I was kind of surprised that it wasn't a draw. You know what I mean? And I, I do think that if he's going to move forward in this division, if he wants to dominate, like I, as the, as the, as the belt holder, he needs to get some more, uh, get some help out there. To, to help him with some more. He's got a good foundation. He just needs some more skills so he can take the next step. I, I'm going to stand firm in, in my belief from what I saw with my eye test. <laughs> yeah. Devin, Devin Haney didn't win that fight. That's yeah. I'm not changing. I watched, I watched replay. Yes, he had some body shots, but his legs were buckling. He looked like he was about to fall a couple times. He was breathing real, real heavy. And like I said, in order to be the man, you got to beat the man. I yeah. thought he lost that fight. And, but for you to say that you're ready for, I, I can't speak for nobody else, but I can speak for Tank Davis. You're not ready for Tank Davis, in my opinion. No. Not at all. Because if no. Tank Davis hits Devin Haney with those punches that Loma was throwing, he might still be asleep. The only thing, I, I when I went back and watched it, um, I fought Lomo... Um, for not even though even though uh, uh, Devin Haney was a sitting target, uh, Lomo never went to the body of Haney. Uh, yeah. Haney's face was stuff was so open uh, that he really never like really attacked the body. And I think if he did fight Tank, um, Tank will figure it out, and Tank will go to his body and drop him. That's just my opinion, also. Yeah, I can see that. Well, like I said, I, who who Shakur Stevenson gets in the ring. And he calls him out. And Devin Haney runs out the ring. Was that strange? Was strange. I don't know. Maybe he didn't see Stevenson coming. No. no. Oh, no. I know you're not doing that, man. I know you're not doing that, man. Yeah, I'm not giving him that because when we see replay something, <laughs> the chorus says something to him, and then Haney says something back to him on replay, and he and he says something back to him, and then he gets out of the ring real quick. I was gonna make mention every day, but I wasn't gonna go there. You no, I mean, it. I think we I, we got to call a spade a spade. We the whole world saw it, so we're just yeah. speaking from our perspectives of what we believe. Like, if that's the next fight, I'm going Shakur Stevenson. One hundred percent. If 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 that's the next mm -hmm. fight, I'm going Shakur Stevenson. That's just my opinion. I think Tank can kind of have it his way. He can f figure out what he wants to do moving forward. And I think he's in total control of his destiny. But since we're talking about boxing, is it official that July 29th is happening? <laughs> what is that, Dave? Let the people know. Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence in the T-Mobile Center live in <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. The fight of the century. Hey, I'm I'm not I'm not sure how much this is true though, uh, but an individual came into because I, I don't read over the clause, but I did hear they did agree on a fight, but then I heard this that there's a mandatory rematch that the individual has can do 30 days after that, and the mandatory fight has to happen before 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 2024. I heard that. I don't know how much true that is, mm. so we might see two. Fights of of Spence and Crawford. I don't want to see two. Nah, I do. They, yeah. they, so we want to we want to make I'll it a, a, a we want to we want to make it a Hagler and Hearns or a Leonard and Hearns or Hagler. <laughs> if, if if we go five, I might want to see a Pacquiao Marquez. Because <laughs> this boys went at it, I think four or five times too. I, 
man, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. Give me you guys' perspective on that fight, though. I need to hear it. I need to hear it. The people need to hear it. And guess what? My son's basketball team has a tournament in Vegas, the 26th <laughs> through the 29th. So I'll be there. Oh, you, guys, you guys are coming with. You guys are coming with. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 the only thing is, is I'm going to be down there uh, uh, for the summer league. Uh, the uh ninth or the sixth through the ninth that 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 early, early that month, so we'll have to see. But hey, if we down there, we down there. But listen, if I'm if I'm coming, I'm making it happen. Man, I'll do what I can to be there, man. I gotta figure some things out, man. Move some things around, man. But that'd be big to be in Vegas for that fight. Oh, Vegas is gonna be turned. I already know. Uh, turned. turned all the way. All man. the way turned. But here, here's the, here is the question: Who do you got? Man, I'm going Bud Crawford. I'm going Bud Crawford, man. I, and it, I'm surprised he's the B side, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me, me, me being a betting man, if I had to bet, I think I think I think RK is 100 right. Uh, me being a betting man, I, I, w- I would have to pick Crawford. And the only reason why I say I pick Crawford is because Crawford can switch in the middle of his fight. He can southpaw mm-hmm. and then he can stand straight up. So there's different, and he could do that mid round. So I don't know if something like that could shake up uh, 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 Spence, but at the same time, Spence is a southpaw himself. So I mean, like we we you never know. They say styles make fights. That's why that's why I want to see the. That's why I'm glad, and I don't know how true it is, but I'm glad that uh, uh, if that is in there for them to have a rematch because I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a, this is a fight that I just want to be in the building just to see. I, I I'm not, I don't want to say who gonna win, who gonna lose. I just want to be in the, in, in, the, in the building to say I have I was, to get. I have to hear an answer. All that all that fluff is wonderful. I can't, I can't. <laughs> all that fluff is wonderful. I need it. You guys made me answer uh, with the with the playoffs. I need an answer. Man, <laughs> hey, that's a tough one. Uh, man, listen. I'll, I'll come back to you. Go ahead. Earl Spence Jr. Ooh. 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 Is why? Earl Spence Jr. And why? He, he, he can overcome all adversity, man. He's here for a reason. Multiple car accidents he should have been dead in. Uh, the, 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 eye, the eye issue. I think, I, think there's a, I think there's a bigger purpose. And I think that he's one of the faces of boxing. And I think that when he gets this opportunity right now, He's he's proven that he can sell out arenas. He's he, he's beat up everybody he's fought, and I think that that, that I think it'd be a close fight. But I think he I think he'll get the nod because I also yeah. think he can take I think he can take a punch too. I've seen him yeah. take a punch. I don't know if if Bud I don't know if Bud could take a punch. We'll see. I but like that, I said, I think they both sell out arenas because uh, even though even though uh, nah, Bud, uh, Bud is not Bud is not as big he's not as big as Earl. He doesn't not, sell out arenas like he doesn't sell out arenas like Earl. Yeah, I agree that he's not as big as him, but he still he still he still has a draw. He still well, you a, you sell out small venues like the the Chitlin Circuit, yes. But I'm talking about like <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the big arenas <laughs> because my man was fighting on, on, on Friday night fights for free. Don't mean all I'm saying is that, that that's 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 crazy, dog. <laughs> hey. We're fighting but, a lot of fights for free. I'm like, bro, why are you fighting for free all the time? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, that part. That part. Hey, what are you going to say, RK? I was just going to say that there's a reason why they couldn't get past Bud Crawford, though. They have to see him. It ain't like he's a slouch. You know what I mean? He's not no, nobody. No, he, but nobody can't running, bypass him. He ain't yeah. running? Spence ain't running? Yeah. It took a long time for them to sign. Yeah, his fight should have happened a long time ago. And I heard the her the uh the hold up was Spence and this uh and this uh and the rematch clause. That's what I heard the hold up. Well, was. I, I, I would love to hear who your source is because your source got a lot of perspective <laughs> with with no sub with no substance. Man, I got a whole lot of perspective with no substance, man. man I, I got I got boxing fans who come into the shop. So look, I, I hear you, and they sometimes people just be talking just to be I in the agree. conversation. I agree. I, I, said, agree. I, ain't, I ain't saw I read that nowhere, and I trust me. I we, all of us, I think we study boxing pretty good, us man, three, because we're real boxing fans. So I I, 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 I read, I read. 
I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm, yeah, glad they, I'm glad they're making it happen finally. Let's see it. I want to see them get there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gotta keep it um on the subject, but not keeping it on the subject. Um, what is the atmosphere gonna be like out there in Las Vegas? Do you have to be in the T-Mobile Arena, or can you just be in any of the the hotels and it's gonna be a vibe? I, hey, I, it's a vibe every, anywhere. I, 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 I'm, I'm there. Like, look, we done been down there when there been action. I'm like, anywhere you go, like, you can't, you stepping into action. Like, action is finding you when you down there for one of those. Like, like it's, it's gonna be a vibe. So, just being there is just, just half the battle. Like, anywhere you go, you there. Yeah, the city's gonna be electric. The city's gonna be electric, man. The feeling's gonna be in the air, man. P- Stars gonna be outside. They are gonna be in the casinos gambling. Money's gonna be flowing. It's gonna be. Good. Yeah, I, I like it, man. I'm I'm excited about it, man. Just to kind of take a a pause for the cause, too, fellas. Um, I think that that's something somewhere we should all be. I think it's something mm-hmm. we can have our only pocket judges T-shirts on and be out there in Vegas, kind of living <laughs> it up. I think that's something that we can. <laughs> can put in perspective. You know what I'm saying? That we that, that we can, that we can that we can get that cracking, man. I think it's already. So look, you 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 good to go. It's just us. Get that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, man, you gotta have my brothers along with me, man. Cause like I said, my son don't care about it. His basketball team don't care about it. They just want to get in the swimming pool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Um, not it, like I said, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I think, I think it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a good time with that as well. Just kind of going to the next subject though. Um, what you guys take on, um, Neuralink was improved by the FDA for human trials. I, I, I like for RK to kind of expound on that. Um, at first, if you don't mind. All right, so you know to give everybody a little bit of history on Neuralink, you know that's um, uh, uh, Elon Musk's uh, company, right? Where they set where they hook up people's brains so they can uh, communicate with computers and basically do functions, type, and things like that, just using their brain directly connected, directly wired to their brain to the computer, and you know neurological link, you know, to the computer. And so they've been testing it on animals for a long time, and it's gotten to the point where the FDA has approved of them doing tests on humans now. So it's moving into the next realm of not even having to have a computer, just being able to link up to, you know, jack up to your brain and link to your computer and type type papers up or whatever you got to do, research or whatever, through just... And just typing your thoughts. Just using your thoughts. And it's crazy. It's like, I, you know, I just think that's a big... But, you know, I don't know the FDA, you know, what I'm saying I don't have that much stock in the FDA right now where I think that they're the, you know, but at least they're a governing body and they're an authority in the government. Right. And to see that they're allowing human trials, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think as far as the next step, it seems like it's it's, it's interesting. You know what I mean? And I just want to hear you guys take on it that, you know, they're allowing human to computer, you know, what I'm saying testing at this point. Well, just wanted to know what you guys thought about it. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read too much on it, but the, but the thought that comes to my mind is, uh, how old or what is the age of the people who are allowing, uh, them to do studies on their brains like that, or, or is this happening in kids, or is this happening in adults, or is this happening in people who are close to death, death, or, you know, or people who are dying, or, or even dead bodies, because it could be human bodies, but it could be they're they're doing that on dead bodies. Uh, just to see if it's having any thoughts. So I, I would, I haven't read down too much reading up on it, uh, but that would be something I would be interested in is what human is allowing themselves to uh, kind of be hooked up and, and, and how is this pro- and what does this process look like? Like I said before on plenty of podcasts is, is that if I've seen it on movies, then I'm pretty sure it's happening now. Like, like it's just happening. That's just how I feel uh, of the technology that we see in these movies. Um, and we've seen that before. We've seen that before in a whole lot of digital things where people's hooked up machines and went to different different dimensions, you know, uh, digitally. Um, um, and so, like I said, we've seen it. Ha- I've seen it happen personally in movies before. Um, haven't seen it happen in in real life. But if you're saying they're approving of it, that's going to be really, really, really crazy. AI is taking a long way. Like we've been speaking on the last few weeks. 
Um, but for something like this, for them to track your thoughts, for them to, that's going to be really, for, and for them to put it on paper, like, that's crazy. Like, you ain't even got to, you ain't even got to, uh, uh, um, they ain't got to ask you what you're thinking about, right? Let me read your mind. You just be like, pop it in there. Like, oh, I'm a mind reader. Like, oop. that's crazy. So, for me, let, like, me yeah. let me give you my perspective. And it is this, and it is this, and this is all it is. How much are they paying the people to be a lab rat? <laughs> Free. Because there's a lot of people with money talks and BS walks. Yeah. So if they're, if they're saying that I'm one of, willing to do a test and then they're going to change your life, but then the side effects, we don't know what the side effects may be. I mean, we don't know any of the intricate details, but for somebody to, to do that, they're going to have to pay somebody something. And if we mention Mr. Musk, money is definitely not an issue. You know what I'm saying? So it's just about the dollar amount, I think. It's the dollar amount. The que- let me let me so so just to go just to go uh, a little further in this question, are you allowing them to do it on you for what amount? You can't put a price on me. I don't do stuff like that. Okay. It depends on if I'm sick in a way that this could benefit me. I let them try it if it's <laughs> if if I'm in a if I'm in a condition where you know maybe I can't use I don't have arms to use or something like that. And this is going to allow me to start typing messages on the screen using my brain. Yeah, I go for it. I mean, Stephen Hawking was no, pretty. We're talking up. about you. We're talking about you as the normal. Yeah, right right there. Right now. Oh, you talking about me? Like right now, today? Right. What, In what, my what, condition. What amount? <laughs> oh no, nah. I'm, I'm not going for it, man. I ain't gonna let them cut up on me like that. <laughs> hey, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. We talking about we talking about Eli. I might listen. I might entertain it for a good smooth hundred hundred mil. Look, hundred <laughs> mil. That's why I'm trying to put this in the right hands. Look, I I throw that to the missus. Like, missus, do what you do with this. Look, I'm gonna take one for the team. That's your hey. no. You ain't gonna never yeah, get this security would, would, at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> right. That part. <laughs> yeah, man, that's 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 some interesting hey, stuff. For the whole time, <laughs> I would have to. I want to definitely look into that a little bit more. Like I said, I read up on it to kind of give some perspective, but I want to dig a little deeper to to just kind of get to see what 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 is the money looking like? What is the what is the purpose? Like you said, is it sick people? Is it well people? Is it um people that are that use more of their brain than others? What what is it? You know what I'm saying? I think it's something that's definitely worth taking a look into to kind of see where they're going with that. But I mean, again, it goes back to what we've been talking about. Technology is beyond what we even know. Light years. It's beyond what we even know. And it's like it's only it's only getting deeper and deeper. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, is an AI smarter than a human? Man, I don't think so. But it's, I, it's, I think it's so. faster though. I think so. I, I was I was watching. Uh, what show was I just watching? Was it Quantum Leap? I think it was like Quantum Leap. Uh, uh, when a dude was uh, uh, in real life, but he was leaping in different people back in like in different futures or trying to track, and he was tracking down his way back to get to. I think he had had something about his wife or something. Or a girlfriend, or whoever it was, uh, and have something that happened, and, and he was doing all the tracking to get back to his 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 self in the future, or in self yeah himself in the in the past. He was trying to get back to kind of change the situation. But man, like I said, I think if that stuff is happening in these shows, I it's happening in real life. If it ain't happening in real life, we're we're twenty five years away, twenty years away, close. They tested it on humans, so we already there. Yeah, okay. you're, you're absolutely right. I know they've been testing on animals, so and like I said, I just it just remains just to see what the future holds because I think it's like sometimes like the bottom of the ocean. Some oceans we never know where the bottom is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we never know how far it's going to take us, and they only let us know what they want us to know, okay. unless there's something that we know somebody that's this this in that's dealing with it directly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of like you get it how you get it. But it's definitely 
has has outsmarted itself and it it, it doesn't it doesn't cease to amaze. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From that perspective. Um interesting thought. Um bring up something for you guys. Tyrese um realized during his divorce trial that it wasn't love, but it was truly um transactional. You guys wanna you tr- you, you wanna you wanna touch bases on that? Yeah, that's pretty yeah, go man. Ahead. It's pretty messed up, man. It's, it's, a, it's a situation where he was going through his divorce trial, man, and you know he he in the in the through the course of the divorce he realized that it, the whole relationship was really transactional. It wasn't based on nothing. She was only she was basically keeping score and keeping tabs the whole time. And you know, it just seems like it's bad, man. I I mean that's I, I feel for him. I know he there's not I don't really know the situation. I didn't know his relationship. I don't follow him to see what's going on in his life or nothing. But to hear that come out, it's like, man, I mean, I know it's already divorced, so it's already a bad situation. But um, if that's what he kept, that's what he comes out with, it's like that's that's kind of messed up. You know what I mean? I don't know. What do you guys think? Hey, I'm I'm in I'm I'm in the same boat. I feel the same way. Uh, that, that's tough. Um, that if you're going through it, like you say, it's, it's a divorce happening, but if we get to like the end, end, and you're like, man, you've been keeping track of this and that and this, and and, and you come to the you come to the to the table like, oh, I remember when you didn't when you didn't th- you th- you didn't put your socks in the laundry basket and you left the, a toilet seat up and like that's crazy to just believe uh uh, uh that women would do something or they, and even men even in, in any any relationship. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy to believe that anything like that, anything like that could happen. Um, but man, like you said, it's a tough situation. Uh, been praying for the, pray for the individual, been praying for him and himself. Um, but man, it's tough. I would just, all I think about is I was watching the other day when we watch air, how he got his start on the Coca-Cola commercial and, um, singing on the bus and yeah. for him to, be a big time, a big time, you know, sweet lady, won't you be my, lady. Um, and all the diff- different songs that he's made. And it just shows you that regardless of famous or not, people have real regular people problems. And it's just, it. I think it hurts more when you really love somebody. And right. the fact that you find out it was only about monetary and never about love, that that's crushing. That's the thing that messes with people's mental health. That's yeah. the thing that can take people out. Because if you have the real love for somebody and it's not duplicated and, you, and, it was, and it was fake, fake the whole time. And then you find that out and you spend so much time in your life. It, it. it just, that has to, that has to be a tough deal is what mm-hmm. I would say. My heart goes out to him with that. Like I said, I mean, it was done is did, but at the same token, I don't think nobody male no. or female would have to feel like that though. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's a, that's a tough way to feel, and really. And just it's kind of sad, though. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, of course, there's always your perspective, their perspective, and then there's the true perspective. So how do you ever get to the bottom of that or really know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's something that you work together on, you know? Agree. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could have been something that, you know, he ran to social media to give his perspective on and Maybe that is, isn't the way it was characterized or viewed by her. And maybe right. that's just what he took from that conversation. I don't know, but you know that was that was just how it was framed. And and you're right. You don't know what how how the situation really went. The, the truth could be a whole different situation. In, in yeah, itself. right. And that's hard to speak to different perspectives on that. You know, yeah. Right. Um, we we do like to take we do like to take uh, a moment here to give a huge huge shout out a huge shout out to Tag Real Estate Group. Um, again, um, it's a family affair is what we would say. And they do a great job. And anybody that needs a home, we got some agents that are standing by with TAC Real Estate Group. We show a lot of love and perspective for them as they they are 100% in the Only Pod Can Judge Me podcast and much love to TAC Real Estate. You guys want to expound on that at all? Oh yeah, Tech Real Estate Group. You know, um, I've done business with them. I mean, my family, my wife is a, a agent of their uh, of the agency. You know, and uh, you know, I believe that they have uh, integrity first. You know what I mean? They have integrity first, which is valuable. Which is you know, 
which is, uh, you know, a cornerstone of good business. You know what I mean? And, and not only that, and I'm not only speaking about that from a fam- from my, because it's my wife and my family, but because I see the work that they put in, the, 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 the effort that they put in to do the right thing, to educate their, their customers or their, uh, their consumers or however you want to frame it. But, uh, yeah, uh, definitely a good shout out, big shout out to them, tech real estate group. Definitely tap in with them if you need, you need, you need a home. I, I, I'm in the in the real estate business uh, with uh, with having a few assets of my own, um, but never but never uh, I've never dealt with tech real estate. But um, I know the kind of work that goes in the behind the scenes. Um, um, I've went through the process four times um, in a few of my processes, and, and some has been good, and, and some has been a little tough. Um, but just speaking from the individual. Uh, from the hearts that I know from a few of the individuals um, that the hearts that they do have and the capacity that they do have, I could see that they could be looking out uh, and having the best interest for their clients who they do have. Um, and then that, and that's, and that's really, really when it comes down to it is being well-educated on, on, on the, on the, on, on, um, on the investment part. Uh, but then also uh, being the relation, the relationship part. Uh, being mm-hmm. being understanding, being relatable, uh, being compassionate, being understanding, like all those things go hand in hand, being able to na- navigate an individual um, through this home buying, or even if, we, even if it's refinancing in the refinancing or, or cash out refinancing processes. In these processes, I felt uh, individuals who, are, who do have a relationship and do have the best interest uh, for their clients at heart, or uh, even rather it's even if it's sometimes uh, when I was going through the agent, uh, he was giving us information that we didn't want to hear. Uh, rather it was like, this might not be a time or t- uh, to, to, um, pull out cash, or this might not be a time to refinance this. And those, and those situations are needed because they've been in the real estate business and oversee it for so long. They know what they could, they're looking for. And, and you as a consumer may not know. So I know the integrity and the heart that the individuals do have. And, and uh, like I say, a big salute out to him. Appreciate you. Keep doing your thing, ladies. Bless you. Uh, uh, um, and any, any way we could, we can help to uh, support. Like you say, big shout out, Dave, uh, for TAC Real Estate. Anybody looking to home, refinance, whatever it may be, cash out, HELOC, uh, be a great be a great opportunity. Man, respect, man. We had our favorite part, gentlemen. It is called Rap Fire. Are y'all ready? Let's get it. Uh, Here we go. First things first, lotion or Vaseline? <laughs> lotion. Hey, I'm a, I got a funny story, bro. Hey, hey, you can call me white if you want. Hey, but for some reason... I don't <laughs> but can you answer people. the question? I'm going to answer the question. <laughs> but I don't get ashy like that. So when I get out of the shower, I don't use neither one. But if I was using one, I'm using lotion for sure. But You're I don't get lotion. ashy. Huh? You're using lotion? I'm using a lotion, but I don't get ashy. Okay. I don't believe that, but I hear you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. What you uh, use a lard? Applebee's or Red Robin? Oh, I'm going to go Applebee's. They got a large selection of happy hour. <laughs> that's a good point oh <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah I would stick with Apple Beach for that reason too Sundays or Shakes ooh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Shakes RK you gotta go first I'm gonna go Shakes Sundays Sundays Sundays, Sundays yeah probably banana or but yeah Sunday, not, go ahead no but no, 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 no splits but I'll take a Sunday <laughs> I will, but no banana split. No banana splits. So when I be thinking of Sundays, I be thinking of banana splits. But got you. Baked chicken or fried chicken? Ooh. Fried chicken. It got to have no bone in it for me. But I'm gonna go fry. But it has to have no bone. Mm. Okay. Okay. Dirk and whiskey or Kevin Garnett. I'm gonna go to Big German. Oh, yeah. I'm going to Big Ticket. Ooh, ooh! I like yeah. both of those. Gary Payton or Jason Kidd? 
<laughs> Come on, talk to me, rapid fire, GP. man. GP. GP. You can yeah. say both. You can say both. Oh, go. I can say both. Then both. You can say both. <laughs> I, I want to go hometown, but I'm gonna go J Kid. You know J Kid. J Kid was cold. Okay. Victor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the glove. Go ahead, though. You the glove. Victor Winwanwe. If I don't know if I said it right. Romaniama. Victor Banyana or Paulo Bencaro? Victor Winyama. Ooh. I'm going Paulo. I'm go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Paulo too. Victor, Victor for me, uh uh is tough with that frame. He has to show me first. Paulo reminds me of a, a young Giannis. He got that build. Yeah, yeah he, he like he could be tough. a problem. Yeah. He's tough. He's really, really tough. Yeah, Paulo's physicalness, it almost reminds me of a if if you really think about it, how his game is, it's almost like a uh um like a shout out to uh Carmelo Anthony on the retirement. Um but 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 that's how Paulo kind of reminds me of of a, of a, of, a, of a Carmelo Anthony when he first came into the league, how his game already was like physical, already translated to the NBA. That's kind of how Paulo's Paulo remind me of. Okay. De'Aaron Fox or Jamal Murray? I'm going to go De'Aaron. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox, man. All the way? All the way. Okay. Reebok or Converse? <laughs> man, I used to love them, them, them classic Reeboks, though. Yeah. Waves. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm with you all a thousand percent, man. The Reebok Classics was my era, man. Hey, you know, yeah, the, all the way, bro. Re, the Reeboks <laughs> were cold, huh? Yeah, they were. Re, Reeboks were I cold. Like six or seven colorways when I was in high school, bro. <laughs> Here's a tough one: Vince Carter or Tracy McGrady? Ooh, jeez. Mm. Half That's man, a, half amazing. That is a tough Ooh. one, but she Mac. T Mac, T Mac, T Mac was Utah's T or Orlando's T Mac and uh and 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 uh Houston's T Mac was an animal, yeah. but I think I'm gonna have to go half man too. <laughs> Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk? Ooh, give me Elon, baby. I guess I'm Elon too, even though I don't agree with all his views. Right. I don't just give me his dollars. I don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that was fun, fellas. Man, I appreciate it, man. And much love and respect to another episode down. Even on the road where our case on the road, the show don't stop. Only Yo, stop. I can judge me. Talk to me, fellas, before we go. Man, I'll just start it off with, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm happy to be doing this, man. I'm excited. Every week we get together, we have these discussions, man. We talk about these real world issues through the lens of, you know, critique of, of, of pop culture, critique of, of sports, man. It's good. It's therapy, man. I appreciate y'all, man. And, you know, I, I'm happy to do this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yes, sir, man. And, I, and I'm going to echo that. I salute, I, I salute, salute you, brothers. Um, and take the opportunity. I, um, um, I do a, a men's uh, fellowship uh, every third Sunday of, of every month and uh, just had an opportunity just to share with the individuals um, that us as men don't oftentimes journal and, and how important it is to put uh, uh, your words to paper or your thoughts to paper and uh, seeing those things and seeing those things become and manifest and uh, 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 for what you want them to be. We don't know how much power that is. Oftentimes we may read a scripture or read a slogan or whatever it may be. And it's deposited in our brain, but oftentimes we don't find ourselves po depositing those, in those things, uh, back into whether we speak them or we journal it. Um, so I challenge the individuals, um, 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 this month, uh, just to, uh, take time uh, just to journal and just just to write out your thoughts or whatever it may be, whatever you could be dealing with, however your day was, whatever, just journal anything. Uh, because us as men, oftentimes, uh, we find ourselves being able to um, just just get things done. Just, oh man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a doer. I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get it done. 
and we never find ourselves being able uh, uh, to be able to, to be deposited back. Um, so uh, in that journaling, I would let the individuals know uh, that's a great opportunity. Um, if you don't have a spouse or if you don't have your uh, significant other, whatever it may be, if you don't have a person to to confide in, confi- confide in, um, that's an indiv- uh, opportunity uh, for you to put your thoughts on paper. No, nah, that's much love and respect. And what I would leave with you, the people, man, be the best you. Learn how to love yourself before you can love anybody else. Because again, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your loved ones. So I just say, try to try to take it day by day, step by step, and be the best you. And, and, and then I need you to subscribe to Only Pod Can Judge because I think we, we're over 100 now, gentlemen, with the subscription. We're going to continue oh, yeah. to push forward. Um, in all honesty, the, um, the nostalgia of this is just an amazing thing to be able to provide perspectives um, for my brothers. And like I said, I love y'all. And to all the people out there, men that have subscribed, much love and respect from the bottom of our heart. Um, only Pod Can Judge us. Only Pod Can Judge me. Only Pod Can Judge me. We out.